Okay, this is the uh, sixth video in our series dealing with model calibration. And in this video, we're going to uh, show you how to actually launch a calibration analysis. Uh, so once you've input all of your data, and uh, here we've got the data associated with our calibration menu, uh, we might go back to the uh, original system map, and then we can launch an analysis uh, directly from the little Analyze button. Uh, we'll drag that down click on Analyze System, and I will drag this menu here into our viewing area. Uh, the one that we want to click on is System Calibration as opposed to a normal KY pipe analysis. And then what we will do to launch the analysis is just hit the Analyze button. Uh, when we do that, and I will do that in just a second, the program will then uh, launch your calibration uh, analysis. A, a little uh, menu will pop up that corresponds to a iteration count menu for the calibration effort and uh, that will be spitting out information on the screen so you can track the actual calibration as it's uh, occurring and when it's done then that menu will then uh, disappear and uh, you'll be back in your normal environment so I'm going to uh, click on the analyze button and then uh, we'll get back after the analysis is finished. That'll take uh, a few minutes, not a few minutes, but a few seconds, so just hold on here for, for a little bit. Okay, at this point the uh, calibration is completed and we can look at our results and the way we can do that is to go up, go up and uh, click on the report tab and then when the results come up we will scroll all the way down to the very bottom and uh, at the bottom of the menu, uh, the report menu, there is a summary uh, of the results for the calibration uh, effort. This uh, summary has uh, a couple of pieces of information that you will be able to see. Uh, one of those is the percent deviation between measured and target values and this is just a number that gives you uh, a relative idea of the uh, percent error uh, associated with your observed results and your predicted results. Uh, the next group of information will be the actual calibrated values for your calibration effort. In this case we were calibrating, as you recall, the C factors for two different pipe calibration groups and in this case those C factors are displayed uh, for their associated calibration groups. Calibration group 1, the uh, optimal or calibrated C factor was uh, 120 and for group 2 uh, that was 90 and just to provide a reference the program gives you these upper and lower bounds so you can check those. Uh, in this particular case, you'll notice for calibration group 1, the C factor was actually up its uh, upper bound. And uh, when you have a situation where the C factors are at either their upper or lower uh, bounds, that normally indicates that uh, you may want to uh, relax that bound and see if the calibration could uh, be slightly improved by doing that. Uh, in this case, if we are confident the C factor for group 1 is not above 120, that may indicate that we have uh, got some other data in the system, uh, be, that being our demands or something that, like that, that we may want to go back and look at. And what the program is telling us is trying to artificially raise the C factors for group 1 to compensate uh, possibly for some other error. Uh, then finally at the bottom we have a, a printout of the observed uh, and uh, measured pressures for this calibration. And as you can see here, uh, the model with those C factors is able to get uh, the pressures to match within uh, a tenth of a PSI, which is a very good calibration effort. Well, this concludes our last video in how to use the actual computer program uh, to do a calibration uh, analysis. If you would like uh, more information about the calibration in general, 
I would encourage you to look at the uh, help menu in the uh, Pipe 2000 environment. We have uh, several sections dealing with uh, nuances of calibration and uh, encourage you to uh, read that material to get some additional background.